Back last summer, I blasted the Clippers for the audacity of being so stupid to give Blake Griffin max money. What was it, like $35 million a year to stay in Los Angeles? Like, how dumb and stupid can you be? You're trading away the best player in franchise history in Chris Paul, the guy that's created so many openings and opportunities for Blake Griffin, actually made Blake Griffin better. Now you're taking that guy away, and you're going to pay superstar max money to a guy who you'll be lucky to get 50 to 55 games out of every season because he's always freaking hurt. Like, it's one thing if you're saying to yourself, we're going to pay about a million dollars a game to somebody like a LeBron James or somebody like a Steph Curry or a Kevin Durant or a James Harden. You'd feel pretty good about the return on that investment. No complaints. You feel like that's a bargain. But if you get to the point where you're paying Blake Griffin what amounts to almost a million dollars per game, there is something seriously and significantly wrong with your organization. And of course there is, because it's the Clippers. They always have been stupid, and they always will be stupid. The same Clippers that were owned for decades by the worst owner in sports, and Donald Sterling, who kept around the worst general manager in basketball, and Elgin Baylor, who then was bought by the Microsoft guy, Steve Ballmer, he paid $2 billion for an organization, $2 billion for an organization that with the current configuration had never made it past the second round of the playoffs, played in the Lakers city, and oh, by the way, for all intents and purposes, plays in the Lakers freaking arena. They got to lease out the Staples Center. He paid $2 billion for a crap organization that didn't even have their own venue. This is the level of intelligence you're talking about with the Clippers over the years. So of course it would make sense that they would give Blake Griffin 30 plus $35 million a god blessed season to sit there and pad stats and only play half the damn time because Clippers gonna Clippers. So you can imagine the laughter I got out of seeing the news that only a couple of months after saying that Blake Griffin was a Clipper for life, they've sent Blake Griffin to the Detroit Pistons in exchange for Avery Bradley, Tobias Harris, both on Marjanovic, and a first and second round pick. I imagine the reports about Blake Griffin wanting to go after Doc Rivers are true. Who could blame him? You go from Los Angeles to freaking Detroit? And I'm sorry, Detroit, but Detroit is Detroit. And I get the whole concept here for Detroit is we know we're Detroit. We know we have a certain stigma attached to us. It'll be really, really hard to attract a major significant franchise changing free agent. So we probably have to go out there and either draft them and or trade for them. But here's the problem with this thought process. You were looking to trade for a superstar, but you traded for Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin, not a superstar. Just not. Stat filler. That's it. Who's lucky to play half of his team's games in a damn season and doesn't elevate the play of others around him. Who's a bit of a malcontent, who's a bit of a knucklehead at times. This is the guy that you want to bring into your locker room. You really felt like in Detroit that this was going to be the guy that changed your fortunes, that made you that much better. Give me a break. We'll see how it is when he's probably watching the playoffs from the sidelines this year like he seemed to every year for the damn Clippers at some point. I give the Clippers credit. This clearly has got to be a Jerry West move because he had to take one look at this contract and realize how stupid and idiotic it was and try to rectify the stupidity of this organization by saying, no, he, he got he gots to go. We are not going to attach ourselves for the next several years at $35 million or so a damn clip to a guy we'll be lucky to get 35, 40 freaking games out of. And even when he's in there, he doesn't move the needle. He's not a franchise player. He's not a game changer. He's not a franchise changer. He is none of that. He is none of that. Absolutely none of that. The Clippers at least made the best out of a bad situation that was of their own creation. The Detroit Pistons have now tied themselves to an injury-prone, stat-filling power forward, and they think that this is a great idea. You paid superstar money to get maybe a third-rate star. I think this shit is hilarious. 
Somebody was stupid enough to give all that money to Blake Griffin, and then somebody was even more idiotic to take Blake Griffin off of the Clippers' hands. <laughs> and I imagine this is going to be the start of a fire sale in Los Angeles. DeAndre Jordan's probably going to go. Lou Williams is going to go. And they can go right back to being as irrelevant as they always have been and always will be. But again... Giving Blake Griffin, what was it, $170, $175 million was stupid. And how do you know that now? Because even a stupid organization like the Clippers acknowledges by making this trade that it was a stupid, stupid contract.